Online Broadcast Network, AfterBuzz TV. Over 20 million weekly downloads in over 150 countries and your number one source for after-show entertainment. Three, two, TV, the destination for TV superfans, producing after shows for over 300 of your favorite TV shows, interviewing celebrities and showrunners, and bringing you behind the scenes exclusives. All thanks to E Entertainment's Maria Menunos, producer Kevin Undergaro, and internet leader Akamai. Now, let the buzz begin! Hello, After Buzzers! Welcome to an all new Girlfriend's Guide to Divorce After Show here at After Buzz TV. I'm your host, Sam Davidson. If you guys haven't done so already, please go on to iTunes, YouTube, SoundCloud, rate, review, subscribe. We love hearing your feedback, your tweets, your YouTube comments are awesome. Thank you so much. It's just me and this beautiful woman here with me. Would you like to introduce yourself and let us know where we can find you on Twitter? Sure. I'm Lindsay Miller, and you can find me on Twitter and Instagram at Rockin' Mama Life. And you guys can find me, Sam Davidson, at SamD43 on Twitter and Instagram, and of course, AfterBuzz TV at AfterBuzz TV on all social media platforms. Tonight, we'll be talking about Season 2, Episode 10, Rule Number 36, If You Can't Stand the Heat, You're Cooked. I apologize in advance if I cough or I sound congested <laughs> for those that are listening and watching. I have a bit of a cold, but hang, hang in there with me. This week was crazy. Um, yeah. And last week, you know, we had Alana Ubach here, and yeah, she... was fantastic. Oh, I'm still kind of on a high from it. She was so awesome. I know. I kind of wish she was here every week, so I could be like, can we just talk about what... She was just Joe. She was so... Yeah. Even the way she sat when she was sitting yeah. next to me, you know, like, she was kind of, like, sitting like a dude like Joe does. Yeah. Which... But a beautiful dude. Oh, yeah. She's gorgeous. She's so gorgeous and, and was so lovely. the little thing. Oh, so tiny. It's so funny. It took me several episodes to watch Girlfriend's Guide to Divorce to realize, oh, wow, she's so little. Yeah. Didn't even notice because she has such a big personality. Yeah. She was fantastic. This episode I love. Um, we start off with Abby and her pub, her editor, yes. Kat, who Kat. is, um, there's another, well, uh, who is it? Uh, Carrie Fisher yes. played the other editor whose name is also Kat, which is very confusing. I mean, they I watched the episode a couple times and they kind of, because the first time I was like, that's that's a not... Well, yeah. Yeah, but then they explained it in a brief line that uh, she was doing quaaludes or something and they just happened to have the same name. Okay. Yeah, I don't know. They were at the All Grove. Right. <laughs> <laughs> it's, I mean, it. I. it probably wasn't done on purpose, and they probably wrote something to try to cover it up. Los Angeles. For whatever reason, <laughs> Princess Leia could not make it for the rest of the season. Okay, for sure. <laughs> but so we get to talk about Abby's new book, and yeah. the, you know, editor was just being an editor. And yeah. Abby... As Alana said last week, she's, like, on the brink of a mental breakdown. Yeah, I feel like every time somebody talks to Abby, she's, like, just has this face, like, eh. <laughs> like, you can tell she's, like, gonna snap. I know. It's, it, it's she, so uncomfortable to watch. It is. <laughs> it's really uncomfortable to watch, and it's kind yeah. of scary, because you're like, where is she gonna be? What's gonna happen? Yeah. And we get to find out a little bit what was written in the book so far, which mm -hmm. is cool. She talks about Jake and them getting back together. She was yeah. honest about that. Which I was surprised by because it was such a big thing when her and Jake were together that they were giving it another go because she was writing this divorce manifesto and she didn't want anybody to know. So I was really surprised that she was honest about putting that in. Yeah, I agree. I mean, I think there's two different entities going on. There's the she-she mm -hmm. of it, and then there's the book. So maybe the book is a little bit more honest. I don't yeah. know. I would like to see more of the book world. I, I love I agree. Yeah. found yeah. it fascinating, and I think that whole editor thing is fascinating, and yeah. it's just fun. And yeah, it's really I think it's a world we don't really, you know, we read books, we know it exists, but we don't really get to see it played out a whole lot. Yeah, exactly. And like I said, that episode with the convention was so cool. We mm -hmm. didn't even know that that was a thing. Yeah, which apparently it is. It's a real thing. So please, you know, give us more <laughs> of that, guys. Let's talk about Gordon and Delia. What are your yeah. thoughts on them this episode, Lindsay? Um, uh, okay. So my first instinct is that Gordon knows. 
and I'm saying it right now, I think Gordon knows. I don't think so. I feel like if he knew, he would... Mm, I don't know. Something about, you know, if you think back to when they were house hunting, how he kind of, like, tricked her into, find, like, liking the house that he liked. Um, I think he has a little bit of a deviousness to him. Not in a bad way, but in, a, like, a... I could see him knowing and not saying anything just to see what she does, to see if she comes forward, to see if she's honest with him. Um, but yeah, I, he was not a nice, not a nice significant other at this party. If he was wasn't. my date, I would be like, no, thank you, sir. <laughs> Let's talk about that. So what happens in this episode is Gordon is having some business emergency. Yeah. These shirts that, and I'm going to be honest, I didn't even realize really that he manufactured men's clothing. Yeah, that was the whole thing. Um, Him and his uh, ex-wife. That, well, oh, I thought that was just. The Gordon Beach line. Which oh, I thought that was just line. women. No, I think it's the whole shebang. Oh, and because I yeah. knew that, but I also knew that. I thought when he divorced her, kind of, that was him letting go of it. But apparently not, and he's in charge of the men's line, and they didn't put a pocket on... Well, they put the pocket upside down. Oh, it was upside down. Yeah, they put it... It just looked terrible, and it was a ton of shirts. Well, I'm sure in some circles that would probably be cool then. <laughs> it could be like Regina George and Mean Girls <laughs> when they cut off her, like, nipple area yes. of her shirt. So it and could then be... everybody else did it. Yeah, it could All be... All the cool kids are putting their pockets upside down. Exactly. It could be a new trend, but he's in a very bad mood. So uptight about it. Yeah, and Delia... Well, and also apparently uh, the offices and manufacturers, whatever, it's all in New York. Right. And he's been... Which is, explains why we haven't been seeing Gordon a whole lot, because he's been going back and forth. Exactly. And, you know, that's kind of what happens to people that travel for work. Like, it's never enough where they are. Mm-hmm. They're never at their work enough, and their work is failing, but they're also never with their families enough, yeah. and their family is failing. So we kind of get a sense of that, and I'm glad that you brought that up, because we haven't. He's kind of been in and out. Yeah. But Delia is not, to me, Delia in this episode. She's the guilty Delia. Oh, yeah. So guilty. And I love that Abby calls her out on it. I do, too. Because she was like, you would not, like, what is going on? That you're okay with what he's doing? Because he comes to the dinner party, and he's just, his poor attitude. He's out taking us, you know, first he doesn't even want to go. And she's like, please come. It's important. And he hasn't been there a whole lot. And so he comes, and then he's out on the balcony taking his call the whole time. And then he comes in, and he's just kind of miserable human being when he's inside and and they're finally they have to leave and Abby's like what are you doing Delia like why are you not saying are you just make sure that you're okay with this because you're okay with this not because you're guilty because of what you did which is a great point and you know so they go to Abby's for this cocktail hour and he's and he snaps at her best friend Abby Mm -hmm. and what would what would you do Lindsay if someone you know well you have a husband I do (laughs) but if he you know especially before you guys got married kind of did that to one of your closest friends it's a big turn off to me it's a huge turn off I mean it's that's like a a deal breaker for a lot of people if like you're it's it's really hard in a relationship if your significant other doesn't like your friends or your family and they don't treat them well. Like, that's... It puts you in a really compromised position where you're forced to kind of defend one or the other or everybody's kind of mad at you because you won't defend either. And it's just this really awkward, uncomfortable situation. Mm-hmm. And it was it was kind of... It wasn't funny when he snapped at Abby. It was not But funny. But I, I felt as though Abby was like a little, like, puppy that had just gotten smacked. And she goes, okay, 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 totally yeah. get it, totally get it. Yeah. And but just I mean, retreated. what would you do in that situation? I mean, he was like... Well, <laughs> the two of them, Abby and Gordon, are literally ticking time bombs. Oh, yeah. Not Both of them. not a good situation. So that stuff with Gordon and Delia, yeah. I almost feel as though, I, I don't think that Gordon knows, but I think that the writers are almost trying to villainize him to make, to make Delia more likable and to forgive her for Maybe. what she's done. That, I can see that. Yeah. This, 
I mean, the Gordon we see in this episode is a very different Gordon than we've seen thus far. He's been very loving and supportive and just really sweet kind of teddy bear kind of guy. And this episode we see, like, <laughs> his claws. It was not, you know, he was kind of a douche. Yeah, he, he really was a douche. So yeah. I'm looking forward to seeing where that goes. Yeah. And she mentions that maybe they should move to New York. Yes. Which is... And she said for a few months. Mm-hmm. But are we losing another lady here like that? No, it can't no, happen. No, I mean clearly it's not going to go well. You, I mean we uh, we can see the writing on the wall. She's doing this out of guilt. She's hiding from Albert. She's trying to convince herself that things will be okay if it's out of sight, out of mind. And it's obviously not going to, you know, work out. That's a good point. To her, New York might even be appealing because mm-hmm. she's away from Albert and mm-hmm. the whole thing, and can pretend like it didn't happen. Yep. But speaking of douchey people, we have a really nice guy that is very awkward, and his name is JD. Oh, JD. Oh, he is just a weirdo. So and, awkward. But he admits it this episode. You know, so we have Phoebe, JD, and Ralph. And let me just bring this into the equation. Apparently, JD has met Phoebe's children. Right. And we've seen them, like, three times um, over the course of what? Yeah. Apparently, like, JD is more important than we are. <laughs> I'm like, wait, this is Phoebe's house now? Wait, Phoebe's children are there while she's, like, making love to her, like, pornographer artist? And... Maybe they were at a play date. No. With the nanny. No, they were there. Yeah. Um, you Nap know. time? I, I, I don't, you gotta do what you gotta do. Those poor kids have probably <laughs> seen so much. I mean, if they've been there during all of Phoebe's escapades and they're just not brought up, yeah. but they've been there. I mean, there's some interesting parenting choices happening on this show. We don't really know where any of their children are. Well, you know, we get a little bit of, <laughs> into Abby's. So we'll get into that. But, you know, like Ralph, Every fifth episode, they're like, oh, he's with... My brother is Manny. <laughs> yeah, and then Charlie, the youngest one, is constantly he's like, I'm going to poop my pants because he's just like, I'm neglected. Someone pay attention <laughs> to me. And he's like eight. So it's strange. Yeah, it is It is strange. But this <laughs> this part, JD actually could be a great influence on those children. I'm interested to see that. But Ralph is coming back from Berlin, and Ralph mm-hmm. is her ex, father of her children, mm-hmm. which is important. Like, that relationship to me should be just as important as Jake and Abby. It's kind of the same thing. They're divorced. They have two children together. But yeah. it's it's kind of, to me, like Ralph and Phoebe were like a fling. Well, because wasn't, is, it wasn't Ralph the one that Phoebe was sleeping with. up with? Yeah, like he basically... After the divorce. After the divorce, he really liked feeling like she was basically prostitute Mm -hmm. and would like sleep with her and like give her things jewelry and all this stuff so clearly ralph is not greatest of guys he's not but he goes to pick up the kids and meets jd and all of a sudden phoebe is an art she has this new job that she's kind of created for herself she's like me and uh she introduces him to jd and says we're working together he's a (laughs) he's a great artist okay phoebe is a professional muse that's what she is. I guess. I don't know. I think she has this, like, need. To, I'm just star- I really want to understand Phoebe as a character. And it's, they're making it very hard for me to do so, other than she just hooks up with a lot of guys. But I think what it gets down to, if you look at the guys that she's with, they all kind of need fixing, mm-hmm. so to speak. And I think because she had such a tough... She had no childhood. And she was kind of this, like, weak little thing that people just kind of tossed around. I think maybe she has a heart for that, and so she sees it in these guys and wants to, like, help them. Like she, Yeah, she can't fix herself. So she can fix them, and that will hopefully help her somehow, which is not healthy. But. No, but at the end of the day, this relationship that she has with JD, I think, is the healthiest that we have seen so far. Out yeah. of all of her relationships. I really like that gardener dude, but... Oh, t- I thought he was a douche. Oh, I really liked him. And then he became an alcoholic all of a sudden. And yeah. So that was, like, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. There's, like I said, there's, there's every color. There's something sweet and innocent about her and JD's relationship. I will I will admit to that. Yeah, it, it seems very young love. I just don't find him sexy at all. 
I know. It kind of skeeves me out when I see them. Well, like... and the porn thing, so... <laughs> as... super creepy. <laughs> porn really it does kind of freak me out. I'm not saying, like, I am turned off by people that watch porn. It's okay. Do it in your own time. Talk about it in your own time. But, like, I kind of... It's like pooping. I don't want to know about well, the details. you don't want to know that the guy that you are liking has a house full of paintings based upon porn that he's watched it's not exactly yeah and a lot of cultures jd on your tinder profile please (laughs) but in a lot of cultures jd could be like literally seen as kind of like single white female oh yeah like super creeper yeah i really thought he was gonna like kill phoebe when they first when she Uh, first went into a studio and the yeah but they (laughs) really are into each other she's in love and Ralph meets him, and they talk about the art, and all of a sudden, Ralph is like, oh, let me put up an art opening for you, and, you know, they're like, oh, Skid Row, people love feeling like they're slumming it. I loved it, yeah. Yeah, it it was pretty hilarious, and we'll get back into the opening, which is kind of where everyone comes together Mm -hmm. again, but it's a very fascinating, fascinating thing. And at the opening, actually, we'll get into it now. At yeah, the let's opening, just, just uh, jump right in. I mean, because we'll we'll go into. Story. We're really just dancing around the elephant in the room that happens at the end of the episode. Oh yeah, that's why we're <laughs> leaving it to the end. So we're gonna go by storyline here. So we'll get into the storyline with Phoebe and Ralph. Long story short, yeah. Ralph gets jealous, tries to poke up with Phoebe at the art yeah. opening, and they basically make it that all of uh, JD's art is they they don't put a face to the name, which is so wrong i think and i felt from like the moment that phoebe introduced jd to ralph that she was embarrassed of him yeah i i agree but at the same time okay just to be devil's advocate Mm -hmm. think about all these people buying art and then they see jd who gets up there god knows what he's gonna do if he's in front of a group of people maybe he wasn't ready yeah because i understand from like the because it is true from like a marketing perspective they're at this skid row really you know whatever cool kind of hipstery vibe place and they've cut this porn art and it's a fine line between that being like a cool desirable art thing versus like creepy guy and JD could very well skew it like creeper and people might not want to buy it. But I think the way that Phoebe handled the situation by kind of being like, oh, let's just go with this and let you be under the radar, and then goes gallivanting around the party with Ralph while JD is like hiding in the stairwell was maybe not the best way to. You yeah. Know. Now that I think about it, I guess she probably should have been on JD's arm because she is like the magic stone to JD that makes him yeah. be social well, and not weird. I just didn't understand why he couldn't be mingling around the party and be like just a guest or her guest at the party and and still not be, you know, named as the artist, but still be there and be present and be interacting with people and that's where i was like mm, yeah i mean a poor choice at the end of the episode we we see phoebe feel bad because jd has gone at the end of the art show mm-hmm. and because he obviously saw her leave with ralph yeah but nothing happened she said no which is probably the first time she's ever said no yeah. to ralph yeah to ralph so the that's gonna be interesting but i also would love to point out that if he got up there jd and said hey guys this is I got these ideas from porn. Yeah. It's no, not said. It, yeah. The porn thing isn't like, oh, these are from porn. It's, no, these it's are just naked women. Art. Yeah. Yeah. But if it's if a word is put to that, I think that it would oh, have I agree. been weird. But the I think the problem was that then she was like, Okay, let me go wander off with Ralph and leave you alone, awkward in the corner. By yeah. Yourself. It was inappropriate. And we have another fun couple though that has gotten together <gasps> yes. finally. Uh, Joe and Scott. I have been talking to Scott, aka Will, on Twitter. We love Hottie Toddy Scotty. Baker. Yes, we do. We are crossing our fingers. I hope to get him in the next couple of weeks. He will be in LA and he wants to come on the show. Yes, but we are come. 
Come. Still, yes, well, and I know he watches these, so please mm-hmm. come, Will, figure it out. I'm still waiting to hear from your manager, but I, <laughs> he, he really wants to come on the show, <laughs> and he loves the show, so guys know that he is watching and really yes. loves all of the fans, and this week, him and Joe finally get together. Yes. He's had, like, do. a crush on her, really. Oh, my God, I love, I love, I love the beginning of this when, like, he comes she comes into the bakery and he's like so nice to her and she's like what is wrong with you and then they get in a huge fight sad puppy dog guys like what he's like what what can it be nice she's like what are you doing she's like why are you making me coffee (laughs) seriously why so funny and then they and then she doesn't invite him to this to the art opening and he gets mad because she wants to take his strudels and not him yeah (laughs) and it's it's very to me you know joe that's what she needs she needs like someone to challenge her and fight mm-hmm. with her and uh i keep wanting to call him will scott <laughs> comes to abby's and just surprises everybody with this with she's so s'mores <laughs> and she's so rude to him joe is yeah. and abby she didn't want him there yeah but then abby was like joe and it was <laughs> it was just really cute i loved i just loved abby and yeah. joe by the way this entire there was just small snippets and yeah. scenes of the two of them working off of each other and it was genius it was sweet, yeah and really fun so he comes and him and joe basically end up sitting chatting and he tells her he cares about her, and she says, why? Yeah. And he just, like, laughs and kisses her. It was so cute. I loved that moment. I loved when she looks at him. I just, it's such, it's such a powerful scene and such a love story that you don't often see written where somebody is really strong and independent and very, very flawed. And somebody else like really just falls for them and all of those things and doesn't want to fix them and doesn't want to change them and just really accepts them and sees like the beauty in her and I love that um and when she says why it like it was so pure like she really doesn't understand and he laughs why he like la- he's like oh why like he probably could list so many exactly. reasons exactly and like it's just so beautiful because it's so innocent yeah like, and we were all like who is he gonna hook up with but it was right in front of our faces mm-hmm. he I'm glad he didn't hook up with any other girls because that would be weird now no. Yeah, no. Didn't we? Yeah, we were like, Phoebe, maybe. <laughs> I mean, honestly, at the end of the... Actually, they probably would have been a disaster. Oh, of course. With Phoebe, opposites attract, I think, is the, the best thing. But with Joe, the Joe and Scott really seem kind yeah. of perfect. So they're a thing, maybe, now. Hopefully. And they started hooking up on Abby's couch. I think this is the second time Abby's caught her hooking up on Oh my god, that was so funny. She's like, you can keep the couch. It's yours. She's like, like, hey, damn it, At least Joe. it was a step up. Last time it was like that really gross guy that they oh. like went to college or high school or something with. He was like, yeah, that's just not, not a looker. No. <laughs> not somebody you want sweat naked on your couch <laughs> let's get into abby because this is what we're gonna hold the rest of this time for let's first talk about abby and dr harris mm-hmm. Ugh, what a dick um i mean really? yes yeah, yeah. I, I i do think he is yeah. a jerk so they abby basically creates this drinks get together before the art opening so all of her friends can meet him right because she's decided <laughs> in a really poor decision that the reason that he doesn't want to be monogified is because you guys i'm shaking my head and putting he my has hand not on my face. met all of the greatness that is in her life her friends and her family and she's like i am so great and my life is so great that if he sees all of my life he'll obviously want to be with me uh, abby and <laughs> When she invites him, he knows what this is. He's like, oh, okay, meeting your friends. Are your kids going to be there? She says that Lily is at a sleepover, but Charlie will be there. He takes a moment, pauses, and says, great. Been Which, so by the looking way, forward to it. when she calls him on the phone from Rise, and she's, like, awkwardly pacing around, it was like, 
It was hysterical. It reminded me of, like, any, like, awkward, com- like, the first time I called a boy in, like, high school or middle school, you know, where you're like, um, um. <laughs> well, that was one of the Joe and Abby moments that I love because Joe's yeah. there and Abby's saying all this weird stuff. And then <laughs> Joe's, Joe's like, like no, stop, stop it. And then Abby <laughs> takes it off speakerphone and, like, waves her away and walks away so Joe can't hear. And that's so real. I mean, yeah. like, that's happened to me. I try to, yeah. you know, be cool. And then oh, I'm like, yeah. shut up. I'm just going to do this on my own. He comes to the party. Of course, he woos everybody because he is a TV doctor and is good with people. Oh, yeah. He's so plastic. I know. And it's just sad because JD is a good guy and he's there, but he looks terrible compared to Dr. Harris, who is yeah. just a, a, big, a big jerk. Yeah. When he's there things you could tell he's kind of like eh. there was something very i thought i honestly thought he was gonna bail like he did on the prom but he showed i was surprised he showed up um mm-hmm, me but too yeah you could tell he was like so there was something off yeah there was something off and he met charlie and uh, abby's son and it, it went well really sweet. Yeah. and charlie didn't like will you know before <laughs> and he really liked Dr. Harris. Yeah. Which seemed perfect. The AC goes out. Everyone kind of, you know, goes their own way to the art gallery. And Abby tries to have sex with Harris. To avoid having a conversation about the fact that Becca is living in her guest house. <laughs> yes, because when he finds that out, he's like, wait, You are bad what? crazy. <laughs> I... Okay, I do... That's the one point I will give him is that when he found that out, he's like, something's not right with her. Yeah. With Abby. Yeah. Which is true. When you invite the baby mama of your ex-husband to live in your guest house, you are a little cray-cray. I guess. Uh, you know. But, or a like, really <laughs> giving person. But I just feel like there's a little something else going on there. Weeks ago, I was like, Abby's mother, Teresa. What a kind woman. And now I'm like, you know what? I think that maybe yeah. no one is that nice. So (laughs) they end up, you know, kind of hooking up. Becca calls her because she can't find her nausea medicine. And he basically tells her that she has too much going on. Her life is full. Too full. Yeah. Apparently he needs someone who's like 22, like doesn't have anything to do except for be obsessed with him and take care of him. Which is my favorite moment of Abby's thus far because I've hated her with Dr. Harris because he's such a douche and we all know he's a douche. And she's like, oh, but he's this dreamboat. And we're like, oh, gag me. But she finally is like, you don't want, you don't want a relationship. You want an audience front and center for your fabulous life. And I'm not going to be that. And I was like, good for you. Yeah. Well, and she admits that maybe that's what she's liked about him to Mm -hmm. begin with. And maybe she didn't even like him that much. And he said that was a low blow, but she was like, no. It was the truth. Yeah. I mean, her publishers, her editors, all these people have been pushing her to be with him because mm-hmm. he's a big public figure. Yeah. He looks good on paper. And in person. And on airplanes. Twitter and Instagram. <laughs> Airplane bathroom. He still <laughs> looks good. Yeah. I mean, it is, but at the same time, he was very honest, which he could have, she could have come back from helping Becca. He could have had sex with her. And, um, like, it could have just not been talked about. But I think that's why I dislike him so much. Because he pretends like he's honest, but then his actions are very misleading. Like, he'll be like, I don't want this. I I want this to be not serious. But sure, let me come to this dinner party with your friends and your child and be super, super charming. And then tell you I don't want this. I just think it's, like, that's kind of what makes him a douche. Yeah, I do too. And the fact that, I mean, he's Abby's age. And then he basically also blamed it. He was like, kids. It's it's you having kids is why I don't want to be with you. And it's like, are you joking me? You're like probably 50 years old. And you're going to yeah. like be giving me like negative points for dating you because I have children. Of course I have children. Yeah. I mean, it was ridiculous. So they start fighting. And then Becca storms in and goes into labor so having the baby let's talk about this abby and becca situation oh, the entire abs. episode the girls abby's friends you know are like is this weird this seems the like single white mom which is so true it was and abby's obsessed abby's yeah she's got some 
Like, I feel like there's this weird, almost like Becca is living the life that she wanted to be still living with Jake. And so she's, like, clinging to it in some weird, unhealthy way. Like, it's somehow (laughs) going to make things better. I guess. I I don't know. Well, I'm sure we'll get a full-on, like, psychological explanation of her behavior. When Abby has a breakdown and goes to a psychiatrist? Yeah. Yeah. I think we'll see that. (laughs) We'll hear all of the reasons. We'll figure it out. But (laughs) Becca is... Okay, let me ask you something about Becca. There's a time, there's a point in the episode where Becca feels guilty and was just like, I should go to the hospital. Mm-hmm. Why are you doing this for me? Do you think that she knows that this is not Jake's baby? Or she has an inkling? I don't think so. Well, what an idiot. I mean, honestly, can you like... I mean, she's kind of an idiot. But I feel like if she knew, I, either she's a horrible human being... That needed somebody, though. Or... Abby, she told her, Abby, like, you're the mother that I've never had. Yeah, but the baby that tore apart her and her ex having a shot, you know what I mean? Like, this baby really did come between her, Abby and Jake having a chance. But it wasn't about the go. baby. No, it had nothing to do it with It was about the, the lie about it the baby. It was. But it still was a huge factor, and for Becca to not get that and if it wasn't actually I don't you know what I don't know because I feel like maybe it would take a little bit of guilt off of her if she knew it wasn't really Jake's baby because then it's like I'm not having your ex's baby so but I'm still that living frees a little bit of guilt because now you're just like a woman that I know who's being nice to me oh see I see it differently I see it that she would feel more guilt if she knew that it wasn't his baby because she has no place there then because technically, let's think about it, Jake probably still owns that house. His name is probably still on it. I don't know. I feel like it's less sketchy. It, Like, if it was me, I'm, like, trying to put myself in this baby mama situation. Like, if it was me and I knew that I had broken up or had played a part, you know, she didn't break up the marriage. Obviously, there's a lot of stuff that happened, but, like, she was a, a player in the relationship of Abby and Jake. And if I knew that I was a part of that... I would feel really uncomfortable and guilty if you were then, like, caring for me and doting over me as I'm, like, having the child of the man that you used to be married to. But if it wasn't your ex-husband's baby, then I would be like, okay, well, no, I don't really have a place here, but you're opening your home to me and, like, you're a really nice person and maybe we could be friends. Yeah. I don't know. What it's weird we, either way. It, it is weird and shocking because at the end of the episode... The baby's not his. The baby's black. I the don't baby is black. There's no other way to say it. Really, you know, perfect way to say that except... It's not Jake's baby. Yeah, and Becca's not black, so no. it, Jake's not black. It can't just come out, you know, black. Mm. I, I, I don't know, but the, it was so funny because when Becca is given the baby... She does not seem... Maybe it's because she's drugged or whatever. You've given birth, Lindsay. I have not. Like, well, yeah. I mean, I don't know. I had a emergency C-section, so my experience <laughs> is a little bit different. But in that moment, there's... You could have handed me an alien, and I would have thought my baby was the most beautiful thing in the world. Okay. And I don't think... Like, in that moment, there's so much going on, and there's so much emotion and hormones and, and stuff happening that... Um, and honestly, she went through labor very very fast so she probably wasn't even allowed to have drugs uh because after a certain point you can't damn Uh, it so she probably i mean first time labors don't really go that fast but it's tv so i'll give you that um but yeah she could have been just so swept up in the moment that like literally when you are handed your baby the last thing you're thinking about is this isn't the baby of the person that i thought it was but then again, I'm kind of like, me. if they had handed me a little black baby, I would have been really confused. Yeah, I think that you would have been out of it, but still so not. confused, being like, wait, what? Yeah. No, I think maybe I would have been a little confused. Yeah, and Abby faints. and But let's think about this in hindsight. At the end of the day, Abby did something very nice for somebody oh, helped yeah. her tremendously and maybe it, maybe it could be a relief and a good thing that it's not Jake's baby. Nope, Abby's going to freak out. 
She's going to freak out. I, she's going to freak out. She's going to blame Becca for her and Jake not working out. And we know, we know that that's not the reason. And that actually has such an insignificant role in the reason of why they broke up. But I think that Abby's going to freak and blame it on Becca and think that she and Jake should still be together. Well, that's a very interesting point because before we get to predictions... Which was my prediction. I uh, want to bring up some fun news and gossip. I don't even know that. So I've been reading a lot of articles recently that Lisa... reading. I know. It's just because it pops (laughs) up in my Facebook. It's the only reason I do it. Uh, Lisa Edelstein... We we who make comparisons. Abby. Who plays Abby? We make comparisons to Sex and the City with the show all the time. Yeah, she was supposed to be. She was supposed to play Carrie Bradshaw back in the day on she Sex and the made City. A about Carrie. Why? I see so many similarities. No. Oh, I see so many. But it was basically no. she had the part, and then Sarah Jessica Parker came in and got the part, and she was devastated and never even was able to watch Sex Sorry, and the Lisa, City. But. Yeah. Harsh. I think that both would have made an, a great carry. No. It's, it's kind of cool to think that. I think that. she lacks, like, the, f- you know, I mean, obviously she's an actress, so she probably could play it, but I feel like there's, like, this uh, freedom that Carrie had, this, like, effortless, like, well, it was that like I don't feel like we've really seen. A long time ago. 20, what, 20 years ago? 20 years ago? Second like in the ago? city? Yeah, like late, late no. no, late night. It would have been like yeah, really young when it came out. Late nineties, late nineties is when Sex and the City started. That's so so that's some really so fun old, news. Guys. If you guys want to look up some articles about that, you should because it's super interesting. And interesting. I personally see a lot of similarities between those two people, Sarah Jessica Parker and Lisa Adelstein. So look it up. Uh, let's get into predictions now. Kind of, sort of. And now, oh your After Buzz TV <laughs> predictions. So we know what you think about Becca. Yes. So yeah, I think she's going to think the CW baby tour, whatever. Hopefully, I'm really actually really excited that, that the baby's black and it's clearly not Jake's because I really would like to see whose it is. And I don't think we've seen that because her current boyfriend is a glowing little white boy too so obviously it's not him so there's somebody else out there and i'd be really curious i i kind of hope that it isn't like a tindery one night stand but it's actually something somewhat substantial because i think it would be interesting to bring in there um i also think joe is going to treat the incident with scott like a dirty one night stand and she's going to try to convince herself that it's just physical and that it was just him hooking up because he hooks up with everybody. And I think that he's going to desperately try to convince her that it's real and he wants more. And I think it's she doesn't understand how or why someone could really love her because nobody has really done that yeah. in her life. And so I think that that's going to be a really interesting storyline to follow. Um, JD is going to think Phoebe's ashamed of him, and, which she is. And that she went off with Ralph, which she did. And I'm curious to see how she wriggles her way out of that situation. And Delia moving to New York is going to be a hot mess. I don't think it's really going to happen. And I think that Gordon knows. Those I, are my predictions. I think that Gordon, something obviously huge is going to happen. Either he knows or he's lying to Delia about a big part of who he is. And that's going to come out. And he's going to be extremely unlikable to the audience. I, I don't want to... Like he has, like, a sex dungeon in New York or something? No. <laughs> you know, maybe that just, like, he's not been this good guy all along that we thought he was. Yeah. Basically. You know? Who, who knows? And with Becca, I have actually... It took me a really long time to start to like her. I like Becca. I like her now. And now that she's not connected to the family anymore, I'm like, damn it, are, are, she's going to go away? No. I don't know. I mean, if it's some completely outsider's baby, is she going to move somewhere else and take care of the baby? She, no. I, now I don't... I still think Abby's going to end up raising that baby for some time. Really? hmm Okay, I thought that, but I had changed my mind. Uh, the Phoebe-JD thing, 
I have, I just really have no idea. I think that he is gonna break up with her, which is gonna be hard because he's like the weakest person she's ever met, kind of. I kind of would love if he broke up with her. Yeah, it would make him stronger, seem stronger. Yeah. So that and might. And the irony of the super socially awkward, porn obsessed loner breaking up with the former supermodel is kind of brilliant. Yeah, I think that might happen. And the I agree with you on the Joe thing. And wow, guys, I think that about wraps it up for this week. Thank you all so much for tuning in. Lindsay, where can we find you on the interweb? You can find me on social media at Rockin' Mama Life. And you guys can find me at samdavidsonentertainment.com and on Twitter and Instagram at samd43. We will see you guys next week. From executive producers Maria Menounos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the entire AfterBuzz TV staff, we would like to thank you for listening to the AfterBuzz TV network. To watch or listen to other After shows and post comments or questions, be sure to visit AfterBuzzTV.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of AfterBuzz TV. Buzz you later. The views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principals. 